What is up everybody, I'm a frog and today I'll be showing you how I beat the Maw in Legendary in about seven and a half minutes. If you've never seen a CE speedrun, prepare to have your mind blown and if you do watch speedruns of this game, I take a slightly different route than you've probably ever seen before. As you round this corner, you pass through a trigger that you can sometimes skip just by going through too fast. If you do hit it, you'll have these floods spawn in, but the bright side is that this lets you get an early shotgun. The flood are gonna bash open this door, so we'll switch to bad graphics and crouch in the corner so the door pushes us into the ceiling. So what you're watching now is definitely the hardest part of the entire level, at least for me learning it. Uh, right here, there's a load you wanna hit. Most of the ceiling isn't solid and you will fall right through. So we're kind of jumping to precise spots where I know that there is solid ground and there's a path that I'm following. If you wanted to do this, you'll wanna try to do this path. So this section that I'm at currently, I only have to do because I'm on controller and not on mouse and keyboard. If I was playing on mouse and keyboard and mouse and keyboard players, there's a teleport that you can do to skip past all of that section in the cafeteria I just did. And you can do it on controller, let me be clear, it's just that it takes so long to set up and line up that it's faster to just do the platforming like I did. And you'll also notice I'm not pausing the video and saying, you know, jump here, then jump here, because this is something, it's so weird and I don't even know how to describe it. You really just have to do it for yourself and kind of figure it out. But now we're back in bounds, so we will switch back to good graphics, pick up that overshield, and go on our way. If you don't recognize this, that out of bounds platforming took us past the bridge, past the cryo section, all of that stuff. We are already almost to the reactor room, so we are just gonna keep walking. Get out of the way! Anyway, coming into this hallway, we always wanna stick that elite, and then there are two ways to kinda do this. You could have gone to the right and just run straight through all of these guys. I took the safer route because I wanted to conserve my overshield as much as possible for a strat in the reactor room that's coming up here in a second. But first, we're gonna go to the armory and grab a rocket launcher. If you did not get a shotgun at the start, you can get a shotgun and ammo here. And now now it's time for the reactor room. In my personal best prior to this, I did a completely different strat for the reactor room that did not involve having the overshield at all. So I wanted to try this, but you could get to this point and not have the overshield and be totally fine and still be able to speed run this level and beat it really fast. But here's the trick I wanted to try. Engine room located. We're here. I didn't watch any tutorials on this jump and I practiced it for maybe 10 minutes. It's not nearly as hard as it may look and it's not very precise. Just grenade jump, shoot a rocket after a few frames, too early and you'll kill yourself, and boom, you're up top. Here you wanna crouch jump onto these barrels. I have had runs die here, for real, because I couldn't jump on the barrel fast enough. In this entire section, you're on a very serious timer because you wanna be able to get these vents without them closing. So you wanna be able to get two at once just like that. Uh, if your timing is off, they'll be closed, you have to wait, it's just huge time loss. And the longer you're in here, the harder it gets because enemies just keep on spawning and it gets faster and faster and more and more enemies spawn. So you want to get in and out of here, even if you aren't trying to get the fastest time, you just want to get in and out of here quick. This one, the vent tries to close, so you have to kind of beat the clock. But just like that, we have all four done, and we're not even three minutes into the level and the Pillar of Autumn is already blowing up. I will also just mention there are ways to take out the vents without pressing any of the buttons. In my previous personal best, I did a strat that involved taking out one of them without pressing any button for it. But like I said, in this run, I did the reactor room completely different. So with this elevator, you can just walk right under it, backsmack this elite, shoot this elite, and then you don't want to shoot those fuel rod grunts yet because once they die in this game, their guns blow up and there are grenades all over the ground and you will most likely get blown up. But if they blow up after the elevator is moving, then everything will fall down under the elevator and you are totally safe. This elevator elevator is really long for some reason, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward a bit. So to this point in the run, there's been a couple dumb things like me getting trapped by the grunt in the hallway or, you know, not doing the platforming quite as fast as I could. I lost a couple seconds on that. But for the most part, like, I feel pretty good about all of this. This run has a ton of room for improvement, and pretty much all of that is in this Warthog run because, boy, I will go ahead and tell you right now, this is not very good. Uh, so here, you kind of want to go between these, and you can kind of like weave your way through them, and yeah, not a, not my best work. It's not awful, but it's not good exactly. Definitely not good. But uh, on the bright side, I don't flip over the Warthog or anything in this, so I would have gotten the achievement for... Uh, not flipping the Warthog or getting ejected from the vehicle during this run. So there we go. There's a positive side. But in terms of the speed run, you compare this to like the world record, it's uh, quite a disparity. So here you just kind of go up left. This is a really easy one. And I still bumped and bumped again and almost flipped. Um, coming up here, there is a tunnel on the left that you can go in right here. That's a little bit faster. Save some time. Totally safe. 
no reason not to do it. I'm not going to do a play-by-play on all this driving because you have eyes, but I will take this opportunity to remind everyone that I'm still really new to this and have a lot to learn and get better at. And I'm not saying that to excuse my subpar driving, but if you're watching this and you're like, oh man, I could never do any of this stuff, I started learning CE speedrunning off and on about three and a half months ago. That's not very long. If you think this stuff is cool and want to take time to learn it, you totally can. The Halo Runs community is very welcoming to new players, and if you did want to learn this stuff, there are a ton of guys in the Halo Runs Discord or just on YouTube or Twitch who would love to help you. And if you go to the channels tab on my channel, you'll see that I have a bunch of different Halo Runners feature that you can check out. And oh boy, here, I forgot about this. This driving is awful. Good heavens. Yep, so uh, if I wanted to get a better time, that's where I would start. I would, I could probably get a sub 730 just by working on the driving. But last point on the Halo Run stuff, big shout out to my guy Sloth SG for all the help that he gave me on this level, both directly through like talking to me and answering my questions and stuff, and also indirectly through some of the videos he's made. I'll put a link in the description to his reactor room tutorial because it's really good, and although I didn't do it that way in this run, I did it in others and it was helpful regardless. So as far as the run goes, we just drove right past Fohammer's death. We don't really care about her, like whatever. She's a dropship pilot. We never see her face, whatever. We're just going to keep on going and try to beat this as fast as we can. Uh, here you get a checkpoint, so that's helpful if like you somehow die at the end or like mess up the 360 or something. I can't imagine anyone being stupid enough to mess up the 360. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Wait a second. Coming up here, there's another shortcut tunnel that you can take. And also in this tunnel, if you go to the right in that opening, there is a talking grunt who uh, is a pretty classic Easter egg if you have never seen it before. There are probably videos of it on YouTube, or you can play this level for yourself and see it that way. In the latest live stream I did, I mentioned that I was practicing this level and was going to do a video on it, and someone asked me if I practiced 360 swag, and I told them, no, 360 swag is free, so I pretty much deserve this. So I was attempting to do a 360, obviously that wasn't a 360, but the reason you do that, it isn't to like showboat or celebrate or anything, it actually keeps your Warthog level so you don't flip over. So as bad as that was, and even though I definitely did not do a 360, it still at least kept my Warthog level and kept me from flipping over. So this is the very last trick of the entire run if you were doing the whole game. You go in between these two barrels, you look to the right, look back to the left, look back to the right. Sometimes your back wheel gets stuck and you have to kind of back out a bit, but that did not happen to me, so I'm free and clear. I can just drive to the ship, and that is how you beat the Maw in under eight minutes. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to show my final time per MCC, because this was an unskippable cutscene. <laughs> So my final time is 7.38, 7.39 on HaloRuns.com rules. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like because it helps me out. And click the video on screen to watch me beat 343 Guilty Spark in 4 minutes and 6 seconds. I'll catch you next time.